Hello. In this video, I will show you how to program the secant method to solve a nonlinear equation. The secant method is similar to bisection and regular falsy methods, so it starts with two initial guess values of x. But the secant method does not require that the expected position of the root should be between the initial values. Therefore, the corresponding values of y could be at the opposite or the same sides of x-axis. For example, as shown in the figure, we start with two initial points x1, y1, and x2, y2, where y1 and y2 are calculated by the given nonlinear function. Then we connect the two points with a straight line, a, b. The x-coordinate of the new point x3 is located at the intersection of the straight line and x-axis. And the equation shows how can we get x3 numerically. For the next iteration, the new point C is connected to the point B. This will create a new secant, BC. But BC does not cross the x-axis. So how will we get the point x4? In this method, the approximation root can be found at the intersection of the extension of the secant with the x-axis. So, in this situation, x4 is located at the intersection of the extension of bc with x-axis. The next iteration starts by connecting the point x4, y4, let's call it d, with the preceding point c. And this is a rule. In this method, each new point should be connected to the one just before it. The new x value this time is at the intersection of C, D and X axis. This yields the point E. Note that Y5 now is closer to X axis than the other points. Let's try one last graphical iteration by connecting E to the previous point D and get X6 y6. This shows that y is getting closer to zero as x is getting closer to the root. At each graphical iteration, the formula of x is shown on the right. You will notice that every new point is found by using the coordinates of the preceding two points. That's why we needed two initial points at the beginning. This makes the algorithm simpler because the first formula is enough to find the new point at each iteration. Now, let's look at the steps of secant method. Step one, input the values of x1 and x2. Step two, calculate the new value of x. Step three, if the absolute difference between x new and x2 is less than the tolerance given so output x new which is the root and stop if the number of iterations reaches a maximum number that means we couldn't get as a convergence so stop else let x1 equal x2 and x2 equal to x new repeat steps from 2. Now we can go to our editor and start coding this method. Now let's start the coding by defining the function of the secant. So we say secant and the tolerance and maximum iterations. Since in this method we don't need any check for x1 and x2 as we did in bisection and uh, regular falsy methods, so we can directly go to the for loop. So we say iteration in range and we can directly apply the uh, function as shown in the algorithm. So it will be x new will be Now 
now we can check for the convergence or if the values of x new approached the root by the if condition So if the function is satisfied, we will break the loop. Else, now we can add else here, and this else is related to for loop and this is one of the features of for loop in python so if the maximum number of iterations is approached without solution so we can let for give us a message saying like warning So in this way, we can know that the maximum number of iterations is approached and the displayed solution could be wrong. Finally, let's return max and new and iterations. Now let's go to the example one and try to solve it by using this uh, method. So the function in example one is, let's call it f equals to lambda function. And then let's input the values of x1 and x2. Now let's call the function and find the results. So r and n, the root and number of iterations, equals secant the function x1, x2. The tolerance, let's assume it is 0 0.00001 up to six digits after the decimal point, and the maximum iterations is 100. Now let's print the results. Root is equal to iterations. Let's run the code now and see the result. So let's enter two values like zero and two. So we got one of the roots, which is 1.5 at eight iterations. Let's reverse the input. And say two and zero. We notice here we approach the same result, but a different number of iterations. Let's try to find another root. Let's say minus two and zero. And we obtain the second root at eight iterations. If this method does not require any condition for x1 and x2, we can define x2 as a default argument. So in this case, you can only enter one value 
as x1 for example let's see uh, how we can do that so let's define default arguments let's say by default x2 is 0 and by default tolerance is 0 0.001 and by default the maximum iterations is equal 100 so in this case we can eliminate all these arguments from here and also we can cancel entering x2 from here so we can say x1 only now let's try to run the code and let's do let's say so as you see we entered 2 and x2 actually is 0 so it is the same situation in the second run and we obtain the same result but we should take care here about the value of x1 because if we entered x1 equal to x2 so according to the equation inside the function we will get division by zero let's test it so if we enter x z x1 z zero and we know that x2 is zero so then we have zero division error so we should take care about this point and keep in mind that the two values of x1 and x2 should be different of course with the default arguments we can add any arguments to the body of the function at the call for example we can define the values of uh, x2 for example like 4 we can define a new value for tolerance like 0 0.001 we can um, give larger number of iterations so let's run the code now and let's say mm, 6 so in this way uh, the value of x1 is entered by the input function while the x2 is defined in the as an argument uh, as well the tolerance and number of iterations don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you